Hello and welcome to MIP TV. And with me, as always, is the uh, is the polymath of psychotherapy books, Bob Cook. How are you doing, Bob? I'm very well on this lovely warm day. Yeah, you got a fantastic book for us tonight. Uh, mm. Power, power is in the patient by yes. Mary and Robert Goulding. Yes. So this this is interesting book, isn't it? So yeah. many people have known the Gouldings for redecision therapy. Correct. So is, is this slight, slightly different? Is this something they may not be known for, Bob? No, this is, uh, this is again, about redecision psychotherapy, this book. Right. Um, you know, we go back 60, 70 years, 1973. So it's, a, it's, a, it's got its vintage. You know, we're going back into history. Um, but, you know, redecision therapy, which was really one of the styles of psychotherapy, and Mary and Robert Goulden, being the uh, L, one of the you know people of elders of TA who created redecision psychotherapy, uh, wrote this book um, after the most famous book I think, uh, Changing Lives in Redecision Psychotherapy, <coughs> which we've actually um, talked about here. So this yeah. is their second book, and what I like about this book particularly is which, which is why I'm bringing it here. Uh, besides, you know, I like talking about redecision psychotherapy. But what I really like about this book is the emphasis on autonomy, taking personal responsibility for change in, in, a, in, a, client's, you know, in a client's life. In other words, it's really centered on positive change and also autonomy. So in other words, contracting is very strong um, around specific change and taking responsibility for the change in the here and now. Yes, yeah, so, and, and I know that you've, you've, you've talked um, previously about putting the new script on the road and getting a new script on the road. Does this link to that, this idea that you're helping clients break the life scripts that they've had created in childhood and carried through their lives? And they're effectively helping people develop a new script, like a new actor would be, to go out into the world and live with that script yes you're right and redecision therapy and especially bob and mary goulden talked about uh, going to the child eager state looking at injunctions impasses and helping the person make new redecisions in the child so they can integrate that in their adult and change their script that's correct that's redecision psychotherapy to a t mm. what i like about this book as well which i don't think was well it was talked about in their redecision changing lives book but really emphasized in this book is the um gestalt ideas if you like because they mix gestalt techniques with transactional analysis they trained with pearls and burr how interesting so they put the two together oh wow, interesting so how what aspects of gestalt would they draw on in terms well, of working working with clients yeah, the idea of personal responsibility for change, mm -hmm. the idea of um, really encouraging autonomy, the idea of con confronting words like try, uh, should, uh, must, can't. They would, uh, they would call that a con into a person's victim state. Mm -hmm. So they would confront that and ask them to change their language to will mm -hmm. and much more a sense of autonomy. Um, they would confront any... A vict what would we call victimary behavior and they would also encourage gestalt experiment um, especially around the you know what people call the top dog and the underdog yes. and the dialogues talking to each other um, <laughs> but they did a lot of work in, and they talked about in this book again about exaggerating ad, you know body movements for example you know so somebody's um, I don't know they're, they're, they're tapping on the on the actual chair or whatever so exaggerate that tapping or exaggerate that food you know that that movement in the leg or exaggerate xxx so they would be very strong in gestalt ideas of exaggeration experimentation uh in in, in the service of positive change mm. yeah and i like the i like the, what you're saying because one of the things that of course pearls was was very clear about in gestalt was the, the here and now was everything and any you know in the past or in the future was this an escape he believed that was an escape from reality 
to mm. some extent. He said that in the Gloria films when he was working with Gloria. Oh. Yeah, and he said, you know, any attempt to go into the past or the future would be an escape, and he would he would focus on that and okay. and say, you know, you're going back into the past, but actually, this is the here and now. It sometimes um, could come across as quite harsh when you talked about exchange those for will do um, and and you know more positive felt mm. like a bit of the, the, the techniques they use in 12 step AA programs. Oh, right. I didn't yeah. know that either. Yeah, where they, where they, you know, they, 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 they don't allow people to escape into a victim place. Yeah. That's what, it's, yeah. that's gestalt thinking. Yeah. So we had a mix of gestalt experimentation, like I've just said, and the idea of what you said at the beginning, going back and making uh, re-decisions from when they were originally made so they could change their script and be different in the present. Now, that's different, I understand, from some of the Gestalt philosophy because of the way you've just described it. So, so what I like about the Gouldings was the mix of Gestalt actionistic techniques mm. and the, the ideas of making re-decision in the present and change your person's script. And using these what I call actionistic experiential gestalt techniques to enable the person to enter a different part of the self, i.e. the child ego state. So it's an interesting book, particularly. It is, and it, and, and it, does, it does kind of speak of uh, a little technical integration, as we'd call it, where yeah. you bring two di disciplines in. And um, very, I would imagine an interesting book for students to... Oh, very and, it, and it, it, you know what particularly is the is the use of case studies and transcripts ah oh. so they in this book they take case studies and transcripts as a way of looking and examining the interventions from a gestalt perspective and a th perspective which is the hub of the book but the actionistic heightening um experiences of gestalt psychotherapy so it, it's very good for students to actually have a have a look at the therapeutic room, if you like, or what's going on in the therapeutic conversation via transcripts. Yeah. So there's there's a there's a strong. It sounds like there's a strong um, base of um, of research, um, and the research would be qualitative. In other words, mm. taking a snapshot from case studies, vignettes, and mm. showing how it works. Yeah. Um, yeah that's good. And, I, and the final thing, I want to get this in because I'm really, hot, I really like this philosophical base. The title says a lot of the way um, Mayim Goulding and uh, Robert Goulding thought. The power is in the patient, not in the client, not not in the therapist. Yeah, the power is in the patient. They have, they are the people that instrument change. They are responsible. They are the people who actually make the change, not, as Byrne often talked about, the therapist. Mm. It's interesting, isn't it, that that shift from expert to um, kind of a, a kind of therapeutic friend walking along. There's a there's a smattering of Rogers in there, I think. From that, <laughs> a dusting Absolutely. of Rogers. I mean, it was you know Rogers came along in the 1950s. He was the real giant of the humanistic revolution. So I'm sure they will have met and I'm sure they will have been influenced by Rogers as much as they were influenced by Byrne and of course, yeah. Gestalt, you know, therapy and pearls. So yeah. they, they will have really ha ha had a huge uh, amount of influence, these giants on them. And of course they became, you know, giants in their own way, uh, Mary and... Mm -hmm. Building and were you know elders in the TA movement and helped shape the TA movement to where it is now. But I particularly like the title of this book and the philosophical, uh, humanistic ideas of the the, the change being in, in in the actual client and not in the expert therapist. And I, I I really come from that place myself. Yes, yes, and I think it's interesting. You said the book was published in 1973. Yeah, yeah. And, and if we think of when the relational turn came in transactional yeah, analysis, that was a long time afterwards. So there's a, an acknowledgement about moving from an, you know, from being the expert to 
to trust in the client. You use the word autonomy. The idea yeah. that the client knows best and can, it can self-generate is, is a fascinating one, for, even from a historical perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope students reading this book reflect on this. Yes. Because quite often students get, I won't say carried away, but they can actually, um, yeah, I suppose carried away with their ego and believing they are the uh, experts in inverted commas, but actually the change it resides in the client. And if there's no motivation for change, no responsibility for change, it won't happen. Yeah. yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think, I think the evidence is, is, uh, is right. Rogers did some research at Wisconsin and, um, and the, that came up motivation to change was the, one of the key factors in, in people wanting to. So we'll tell you the name of this book again. The power is in the patient, Mary and Robert Goulding. We'll put a, uh, we'll put a link below. So mm -hmm. click on to the link below and you can go and examine the book. As always, Bob doesn't get paid for book reviews. This is an endorsement or a paid book review. Didn't even get a free copy of the book. Um, Bob is just showing his love of, of love of literature. So Bob Cook, thank you very much. Thank you.